35 miles an hour is the claim top speed on the Ghost Cat F2.2. 37 miles an hour. It's got a 1500 watt rear hub motor and it runs on 52 volts with a 40 amp controller. Launch is pretty hard. 11. 20? Yeah, dude, this thing hits hard, man. This, this is a fast e-bike. Current MSRP is a dollar short of $2,000. Any sort of discount I can offer you will be linked below the video in the description box. But do not buy the Ghost Cat F2.2 just yet. We gotta take a closer look at this thing, then take it out for a full review, test the top speed, test the acceleration, test the brakes. Coming in at 30 miles an hour towards this wall. We're gonna run it through the ringer. Let's get to it. Similar to the original Ghost Cat I reviewed, this comes fully assembled to residents of Southern California. And there are a variety of color options. I went with the white. I mean, it's the Ghost Cat. You can see the rear swing arm is white and the wheels are also white, which houses the Zofo geared hub motor, which is rated for 1500 watts of continuous power. And you might've noticed the rear passenger pegs, which might double as wheelie pegs. And it does have seven gears on a Shimano cassette. Shimano Altus derailleur with the derailleur guard and installed in case you tip the bike over when you're practicing those wheelies. You won't damage that. And the F2.2 is running a DNM RCP2S burner rear shock. It is a coil shock with a 550 pounds per inch spring. There is an adjustment for the rebound as well as the compression. So we'll play with those settings here in a few and we'll crack the heart of this system open in a few. But first let's look at the front suspension. It is a dual crown fork with a compression adjustment on the right stanchion and a preload on the left. The 52 volt 40 amp controller is housed down there. Let's pop this battery off and give it a peek. So it does have this carbon fiber look to it. There's a key to take it off. Got a little bit of weight to it because this is a 52 volt, 20 amp hour, 1,040 watt hour energy battery pack. Should definitely have a little bit of extra pep over it compared to a 48 volt system. And a 52 volt battery charge to max is 58.8 volts. And it is a 20 amp hour battery pack divided by a two amp charge rate on the charger they give us. So that'd take about 10 hours to charge this thing from completely empty to completely full. The seat is long and it feels nice and plush. Actually, let's pop that battery on there. Locks on. And there is a tail light back here that turns on with the headlights. If you pull the brake lever, it functions as a brake light. And speaking of brake levers, these are some nice feeling brake levers. And speaking of feel good, check out these grips. These are some cool looking grips. Got like a little bit of like rubber grip here and then some style points here. Taking a look at the right grip, of course this is a full twist throttle e-bike. Heck yeah. Let's see what the horn sounds like. There are seven speeds on the Shimano shifter. We are running the M5 basic display. We can turn the light on and off by holding the plus button for about two seconds. Then of course the top is our battery life. Speed pedal assist, which you can adjust with these buttons up to five. Tapping on the M button here will change the mode to trip. And then we can see the voltage of the battery. We're sitting at 59 volts right now. That's what I'm talking about, dude. And then a current output of the controller. So we can kind of measure how much power is being output. Power is voltage times current. There's your stuff. This particular bike has the extended stem, something that's appreciated for a tall dude like myself. And then just like the F1, we get this little bag on here. It's like a cell phone holder slash little pouch to, uh, you know, bring some goodies. And here's a peek at those massive 203 millimeter brake rotors. It is running two piston hydraulic brakes. These should be pretty freaking legit. This is like way bigger than we typically see on these kind of bikes. And we get the same size brake rotor, both on the front wheel and the rear wheel. Kickstand is not in the most optimal place but there is a benefit to that. Let's have a peek in the controller box. So here is the controller, has some heat dissipation fins. And taking a closer look at the controller here, it is a 52 volt, 40 amp controller, plus or minus one amp. So we might be able to get 41 amps out of this thing. Looks pretty legit. So I am six foot five, inseam 34, hopping on the F2.2. Here is my standover height and sitting aboard. Oh yeah, we got that cloud suspension again, dude. Just like the F1, man. These things are like floaty, floaty, floaty. <laughs> Might bottom it out, we'll see. But we can adjust that compression and rebound. So if I were going to actually pedal this e-bike, here's what my pedal stroke would look like with a 34 NC. We'll uh, probably be using a lot of throttle today. And yep, uh, I'm feeling a little extra fat, man. This, that, that, this is not a 48 volt e-bike, ladies and gentlemen. Here is what that headlight is looking like up front. This is probably a little dangerous to be doing here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So back brake is motorcycle style on this e-bike, meaning it is on the left side of this e-bike. No skid marks on the floor, please. 
<laughs> oh yeah, dude. I'm getting pumped to take this thing out, bro. Not a perfect fit, but doesn't mean we're not gonna have fun on it today. Not sure what the exact weight of this bike is, but not terrible. Maybe 80, 80 pounds-ish. And if you missed my F1 review, one of the benefits of this kickstand is being in the center, even though it'll block your pedals, uh, Helps you just kind of rotate the bike around like a motorcycle, bro. I mean, is it a motorcycle? Is it a bicycle? And we are rolling on knobby 20 by four inch tires. The big daddies. It says it has shark skin, a nylon breaker. I'm guessing that's some sort of puncture resistance. So let's put this thing on pedal assist five, see what it'll do on throttle. No load at all. Oh yeah. Got a little bit of juice. It's a little bit dangerous doing this. So no load on the motor full throttle. It'll spin on up to about 40-ish, 38 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. Let's go see what it'll do in the real world. All right, dudes, let's take out the Ghost Cat F2.2 for a ride. We'll fire up the Strava here so we can check our official range on this 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery pack. We'll go ahead and give this little phone holder a little try today. Nice, we can uh, operate it through the clear protective thing. So we'll track our official speed in a bit. Let's fire this thing up. Get on out of here. Oh my goodness. Got a little bit of pip. We do need to get an official weigh in on this thing. So my weight right now is 194.4, 275.6 with the battery. And it's fully charged. Just to give you an idea of these headlights, I'll go ahead and fire them up here in this tunnel. Pretty legit. And then we have our brake light as well. Here's what it looks like next to a Yamaha engine cycle. Another engine cycle. We're on a motorcycle. So you already know what time it is. We're going to run it up to 20% grade. See how it does on throttle only with a 200 pound rider. Full throttle. Ready? Go. Oh, we have it on one. I'll put it on five. So we have 37 amps of current. Yeah, we're whipping, dude. Holy crap, man. So that was about 11 miles an hour. And right away, I can tell this thing got a little bit of pep. So out of the gate here, it appears the speedometer is going to be relatively accurate, showing 14 on here, 13 here, cruising. But before we get too crazy, let's flip this thing on down to pedal assist zero. I am on the top gear, just kind of pedaling along here. I am absolutely not going to be pedaling this bike at all today. This thing is just way too small for a six foot five dude. But boy, man, this suspension is feeling plush. And that is, this is amazing, man. The suspension and power are the two key highlights of this bike, I can tell you already. So those brake cutoff sensors, if you hold those uh, brakes in, it won't give you any power. Power. We have it on gear one and then uh, pedal assist one will bring us up to ghost pedaling uh, about eight, nine miles an hour, somewhere in there. What if we full throttle it now? So it will give us the full power to take us beyond pedal assist one speeds. Let's see what pedal assist two does. So we got to get shifted up to about gear four already here. So the gearing on this seems to be uh, pedaling assistance for lower speeds. And it's a bright day here in California. We're gonna throw on the polarized sunglasses. Can you see the M5 display through those polarized lenses? Yes, you sure can. That's always great. Brakes are feeling excellent out of the gate. We'll give them an official test here in a bit. So pedal assist three, just kind of rolling here. Let's see about a quarter rotation there is kind of easing on the power and is a cadence sensor so it's just kind of gradually giving us power here about 13 amps of current up to i'm just ghost pedaling not putting in any power no tension on the chain even that'll bring us up to about 20 and let's bump it on to pedal assist four just kind of ghost pedaling here i i can't keep up with the pedaling anymore at this point with you know my long legs but uh into a headwind we're pulling up to about I mean, it's giving us a pretty chill 15 amps of current, 17 amps of current, and that'll get us to about 26. And this thing feels uh, pretty light and nimble going into turns with those spoke shorter 20 by four inch wheels. So sometimes bikes, they won't run spoke wheels. They'll run, you know, like mag wheels. They're more durable, but they're heavier. Spoke wheels are light and nimble, man. This bike feels really tossable. And I'm loving these grips, man. They're like, big and wide they just look cool and of course we have the full twist throttle which is always excellent in my book and that dnm shock on the rear is feeling like a cloud let's try it off road just a little bit here oh yeah feeling like a cloud off road too man we are just like 
floating over these bumps, man. This is this is some nice suspension for this bike, man. So let's put this thing on to mode number five here, and I will just kind of ghost pedal, heading out into traffic here, see what it will take us up to. So uh, looks like it's giving us about 20 amps of current ghost pedaling on pedal assist five. Now it does say like manual mode on there. I'm not sure exactly what that is. This is not giving us full power, I can tell you. But it is taking us up to 30. We'll test the top speed here in a few. And we'll lane split our way up here to do an acceleration run. And with the crackdowns of the electric dirt bike style stuff on the streets, you know, look, we got a sheriff right here. I'm drawing no attention from the cops here with these uh, pedals on here. You know, this thing just kind of looks like a typical electric bike. They don't know this is 52 volts, 40 amp controller. And it feels a little ridiculous, but we're gonna just pop off here, beat traffic off the line. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a zero to 20 acceleration. We have a 40 amp controller sitting at 50 7.6 volts so that should be about 3200 watts of peak power now that motor can take 1500 watts nominal so that means you know running it continuously for a long time i'm going to tilt this camera down so you can see my gps speedometer as well as the onboard speedometer i weigh 200 pounds ready go so yeah <laughs> launch is pretty hard 11 20 <laughs> Yeah, dude, this thing hits hard, man. This, this is a fast e-bike. Now, I know some people shopping this bike might be cross-shopping with a direct drive hub motor that's pretty popular in moped style. In general, man, I'd say geared hub motors like, like what's on this bike just kind of hit harder in terms of acceleration. But the gearless hub motors, they'll be better at hitting ultimate top speeds. So it's kind of like, you know, a choice between like, what do you want, top speed or torque? This is kind of like a torquey bike. When you hit that throttle, man, it, it's like compression that really Bigger suspension and it feels good man all right dudes we're gonna do a little top speed run i'm gonna turn this camera down so you can see my gps down there hopefully whip this thing around and full throttle i'm not gonna pedal at all showing 35 amps of current 20 miles an hour onboard speedometer i don't know what's going on with the onboard but 29 30 32 on the gps 33 on the gps Still picking up speed, 34 on the GPS. Still putting out 30 amps on the control, 36 miles an hour. So this thing whips pretty good, man, doing 36. I like, feel the uh, wind is starting to really reduce, not reduce my speed, but hold me back. Still pulling 30 amps, so we're cruising 35 miles an hour. I don't know what's going on with the onboard, but GPS does say 35. And so check it out, they sent me a new replacement display. I think it's safe to throw this one away. Wait, that's not how you throw it away. Here you go. And out here cruising on the new display next day. Yeah, it's showing uh, 20 miles an hour on GPS, 20 on the display, and on a full fresh charge. Ready, go. 40 amps of current, 15, 20. This thing is freaking quick, dude. And you know, I think one of the things that makes this feel so quick is it has shorter 20 inch wheels and they are spoke wheels. So we got, you know, a shorter diameter and also less weight compared to like a heavy mag wheel. Shorter wheels accelerate faster. Ready, go. 36 amps, 35 amps, 20. And let's do a top speed run on pedal assist five. Not sure if it'll make a difference, but ready, go. This light's red. Come on, baby, change green for me. 33, 35, 36. Where are we getting the drop behind this Mustang? 36. 37 miles an hour. So we did hit 37 for a brief fraction of a second there. 37, dude. So it does top out. 37. Pretty freaking impressive for a 52 volt bike. Uh, but it does make sense, you know, 52 volts full charge, about 58 volts, 40 amp controller. Multiply those numbers out, you get your wattage. Uh, pretty, pretty high wattage electric bike, man. But the most significant thing about this bike is just how freaking torquey it feels, man. Like this thing is like above and beyond a normal hub drive motor I try. And also maybe I shouldn't have smashed that other display. This speedometer appears to be giving me a little bit of a malfunction as well, but honestly, who even cares? Bro, you're not the only one out here steamrolling today. So we'll get out there on the flat sand in a minute, but first let's try and run it up this uh, uphill in the sand, full throttle, plenty of power. 
Oh yeah, full throttle, and then we're gonna ride through this particularly harsh section right here by the Venice sign. And yeah, dude, that rear suspension is just eating up all those bumps, man. This thing is riding on a cloud compared to most e-bikes, full suspension e-bikes I try. So we'll get it out on the uh, flat sand here shortly. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood here in Venice, California. Everybody's out playing. Get yourself an e-bike, get out here and play too, dude. Nice bike, man. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I don't want to race out here. That's the Hemiway C5. Price about the same as this. It's about half the power. All right, dude. Let's ride this thing out on the sand. See how it does. Looks like we got a little bit of clouds coming in. Hopefully it doesn't rain on us. And generally, taller 26-inch wheels do the best riding on the sand. But these are four inches wide and we do got the big power on this thing. So uh, we are ripping through this sand just fine. Outputting about 37 amps of current. Says we're going around. Well, the speedometer is jumping around. I can tell we're moving pretty quick here. And after we're getting down here on the more hard pack sand, uh, yeah, this thing's ripping pretty good, dude. We're gonna pull on back up here more towards the loose pack sand. See how it does going up the hill here. And and we're kind of all over the place a little bit on these shorter 20 inch wheels but we are powering through it says uh 36 amps of current there so this thing is uh outputting a significant amount of power for quite a while oh man we are we are working this geared hub motor but yeah we are plowing through this really soft sand here it has not rained out here in quite a while so it's a little extra soft and we are floating around man but yeah plenty of power dude this thing's ripping on through heck yeah dude powerful geared hub motor 52 volt and speaking of police crackdowns man i feel totally comfortable just cruising right on past the Santa Monica police here on this pedal electric bicycle. So we have just two more tests left in this. One of them being running up the California incline, 85 feet tall, 12% grade. We'll see what kind of toll that takes on the battery and what kind of speeds we can hit. So rolling into the spiral section here, we will see how much torque this bike delivers, how well it balances. Oh yeah, dude. This thing is whipping, bro. <laughs> this thing handles like so nimbly and it is torquey and powerful. And then the other test woo, <laughs> will be a brake test at the bottom of the California incline before that wall, hopefully. And we'll get out the trusty old GPS speedometer here since we're having a little bit of difficulties with the onboard. Already hitting 16 all the way down here on the bottom, 18. 20, 21, 22, 35 amps of current, 24 miles an hour. I'm gonna have to light off just a bit here. But needless to say, this thing is pulling hard all the way up the California incline, giving 35 amps of current back up to 22. And now going down the California incline, we're hitting 20 to 30. All right, I'm lighting up. So we have massive 230 millimeter rotors. And it is particularly important to remember the rear brake is on the left, coming in at 30 miles an hour towards this wall. And there's plenty, plenty, plenty of stopping power on tap. Back tire was skipping along just a little bit there. And I definitely did not grab that front brake all the way because if I did, oh yeah, this thing, this thing has a lot, a lot of stopping power. This is the kind of bike you gotta be careful not to grab that brake too hard on the front as you could send yourself over the handlebars into a brick wall. Wear your helmets, boys and girls. Yeah, dude, if you're looking for a fast e-bike, this could be the ticket. And to answer the question everybody wants to know, can it do a burnout? Let's try and use these back pegs, see if we can unalive ourselves. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got the dork, man. Whoa. <laughs> so really question is not, can it do a wheelie? The question is, can I balance a wheelie? The answer is no. And no, we have rain coming in. What the heck, man? Why is it raining? Actually, let's see if we can outrun the rain. We got the 52 volt. We're gonna take the streets for maximum speed. So final thoughts on the Ghost Cat F2.2. List price of this e-bike is right around $2,000 and I definitely, definitely feel like it is worth two grand. And if you are thinking about picking one of these things up, if you did buy through the link below this video in the description box, it would help my reviews here on Tail Happy TV. And I would greatly appreciate your support. I mean, pretty much the bottom line on this thing is it's powerful 
and has supple plush suspension. It's a nice riding e-bike with a nice full twist throttle and I like it. Let's go check the final range. Oh my God, the roads are wet. I should keep that in mind. So you might get a little bit better range than what I'm gonna do here today because I'm pretty much whipping this thing all the way home full throttle. And I'm not pedaling this thing at all. Overtaking cars in the bike lane here. Actually, we just need to merge into traffic, I think. Woo! Coming in hot, dudes. Watch for the doors. Watch for the doors. Ooh, good break. Just pretty sure this little two horsepower EV just overtook about 20,000 horsepower worth of cars here. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna have to back off the throttle going 32, 33. Dang, this thing is nimble. Woo! Mustangs! Number one danger to all vehicles and bikes. All right, I'm gonna slow our roll here. Oh, you're good. <laughs> gotta be watching on a bike, bro. I'm feeling the sprinkles coming, man. We gotta, we gotta get home. Still pulling 35 amps. Look at those e-bikes. Those are cute. All right, dudes. Just crossed over 18 miles an hour, 20 minutes ride time today. Average speed a little bit higher than normal after that speed run home at 13 point, nearly five. And looking at the battery bar here, man, these brakes are just so good. <laughs> so it is showing a little bit over half on the battery bar. The voltage is reading 50.1 volts, which on a 52 volt battery, I would argue is actually a little bit under 50%. So me, you know, 200 pound dude, whipping this thing pretty freaking hard, burned about half the battery roughly in 18 miles. Obviously I didn't pedal at all. So, you know, range is, you know, very dependent on your speed, your weight, all that stuff. You could hammer some good range out of this thing. If you don't hammer the throttles, one or the other, you know how it works. In my experience, when you have this much power on tap, you're gonna end up using that power up. I mean, how can you resist? Anyway, all around Ghost Cat F2.2, awesome bike. I'd recommend it. If you do wanna grab one, buy it through the link below. It would help support my reviews and also give you the best price. However, if this is not the electric bike you're looking for, watch this video next. Catch you over there.